afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. Over the past several years, we've shared with you a number of stories about the Green Mountain Farm to School program. The program is based in Newport. It works with schools, businesses, and farmers in northeastern Vermont with the goal of expanding access and distribution of local food. We featured a number of farm to school projects, such as the coupon program for fresh fruits and vegetables and the composting shed at the Lowell Graded School. Green Mountain Farm to Schools founder and longtime executive director Catherine Sims has transitioned into a new role, so today we're joined by her successor. It is a pleasure to welcome the new executive director, James Hafferman. Thanks so much for coming in. Thanks for having me. Tell me a little bit about your background. Well, I've spent the last 17 years working in the nonprofit sector uh, in management and operations and development, and um, really am grateful to be here in the Northeast Kingdom working on an issue that's really close to my heart. Uh, I helped found an energy efficiency nonprofit in Washington, D.C., and helped take it international. And now I'm here uh, working in the Northeast Kingdom, when, where I grew, grew up in the north, northern part of uh, New York mm -hmm. in a dairy farming community, so this is really close to home. Tell me a little bit about your work with Salvation Farms. Um, I was a development director there, mm -hmm. so I was helping with the fundraising and outreach uh, for our work uh, to make sure people know about uh, food loss mitigation and um, helping get food to people who need it. What have you been focused on at Green Mountain Farm to School since you came on board in January? Yeah, so, you know, as a new executive director, it's really important uh, for me to get to know the community and our partners, the staff and the board, so I spent a lot of time doing that and listening, learning uh, about our programs, seeing the programs in action, and then helping um, build out the plan for the coming year as we were moving forward. Well, the Across the Fence team first met the Green Mountain Farm to School in 2013 when Rebecca Gollin headed north to see the organization's food truck in action. It's called the Lunchbox. Let's take a look at that. This is basically all Garden of Urban salsa. It's his tomatoes, it's his cilantro, and some onion. Not far from the Urban's farm, Megan Stockco is preparing food for an upcoming farmer's market. It'll be chicken with fresh salsa and cheese with some just cabbage on the top for texture. Using local ingredients, Stockco will produce several options for her customers. That her kitchen is a bit small is no problem for Stockco. She's used to that. The lunchbox is like any restaurant with a couple of key differences. On a typical day, I usually come here early in the morning around 8. I load the truck up with fresh water, make sure we have enough propane, kind of check the vitals for the truck to make sure that the equipment is working. Besides the fact that it's on wheels, the biggest difference between the lunchbox and most other restaurants is that at the lunchbox, they give the food away. We know that summer can be a really hungry time for many in our community. And Catherine Sims is the executive director of Green Mountain Farm to School, the organization that operates the lunchbox. She spearheaded the effort to create the program, from getting it funded to finding a vehicle to retrofit. The truck itself is multi-purpose. It's a commercial kitchen and traveling farmer's market. It's also a place where kids can come and get a free meal during the summer. We're able to offer free meals for kids 18 and under um, that feature all local food, so it's returning dollars back to our farmers and making sure that kids aren't going hungry. Well, if you're just joining us, I'm visiting with the new executive director of the Green Mountain Farm to School program, James Hafferman. So how was the 2017 summer lunchbox? It was a really successful year. Um, we served just about 1,500 free meals to kids in the wow. three towns where we go. Um, and also had a lot of great uh, support from uh, the community coming out uh, and purchasing lunches uh, that helps support the truck. Mm -hmm. And so what's the future look like for the Lunchbox? Well, we're very committed to continuing the Lunchbox uh, in the three towns and um, really want to make sure that people know about it. And so we're really focusing on uh, raising awareness um, and also uh, consumer su support as well. So we're fortunate this year to um, have a great partnership with the Abbey Group uh, who helped prepare the food uh, and serve it in conjunction with our staff. And uh, we had support from Concept2 Rowing and North Country Hospital, all of which help make sure that that truck is on the road uh, those 10 weeks during the summer. So we hope to continue doing those kinds of partnerships as well. Remind us too how the truck works um, and where it serves the communities. Yep. So we go to three towns, mm -hmm. um, one day each for each town during the week, 10 weeks during the summer. Uh, so we go to Island Pond, uh, Newport and Barton. And so people probably 
are expecting you. Yeah, they are, <laughs> and there's usually quite a line. Let's talk a little bit about your organization's work with the schools. One mm -hmm. example is the Lowell Graded School. You mm -hmm. helped them set up a composting program in advance of Vermont's universal recycling law. Why is that type of program important, and how is your program helping other schools as well? Yeah, oh, so um, oh, with Lowell yeah. Graded School, uh, we have a farm to school program with them, and the, the composting is one element of that. Um, Kamahuistin is a great way to teach kids about math and science, and the schools really incorporated that into their curriculum. Um, and composting in general is important to be teaching kids. It's helping divert, you know, teach them about the value of diverting waste from landfills, and also the value that it uh, puts into the, the soil for them to be able to grow food. Mm -hmm. um, and then our other program, uh, the farm to school program, which helps teach kids about where their food comes comes from, how it's grown, uh, why it's important to eat healthy food. Mm -hmm. And then they also take these lessons to home with them. Exactly. And yeah. help their parents learn about how to compost. Precisely. So you have a statewide program also called Vermont Harvest of the Month. Tell us a little bit about what that's about. Yeah, Harvest of the Month is a monthly uh, campaign, awareness uh, raising campaign, um, really um, stressing the importance of eating seasonal and local. And so uh, each month we're able to feature a, sp a specific crop that is grown or produced here in Vermont. Um, and we have recipes that are available and curriculum guides for schools. And there's often a lot of um, attention paid by food service management companies and uh, f food service directors around adding that food into the menu for the schools. Now we're seeing um, work here by the kids themselves doing recipes. Why is that important? Well, again, if you don't know how to cook or you're not um, interested in it, it's probably going to be hard for you to begin uh, tasting and eating the food. So we start with taste test and then build in uh, cooking lessons as well so that kids begin to build that into uh, their way of life. Mm -hmm. And so what are you seeing with the kids that are, have been involved in these programs going forward? Yeah. Well, I mean, you see a, a transformation in them. Um, so many of them uh, begin to be excited about food and where it's coming from and how it's grown. You get to go out to the garden, you see them planting it. Um, all of that is helping them understand uh, what impact it's going to have on their life and on, on the local economy as well. Mm -hmm. And so what is the hope going forward with this program? Um, with the farm to school in mm -hmm. general? Well, I mean, our mission really is to restore and strengthen um, the food system of Vermont, and I think that really starts with our kids um, and also in conjunction with our farms. And so building uh, that long-term perspective of uh, growing food and keeping it local but also eating healthy, it's going to really, I think, change um, the future of the Northeast Kingdom, especially as we face some s serious um, health uh, challenges in that region as well. I was, to diet. Yeah, I was going to say, um, can you just talk a little bit about that? Because, yeah. you know, eating healthy is really important. Exactly. Um, and, but it can be expensive. Yeah, it can be expensive. Um, that's why, in large part, we have uh, teaching kids about how to grow their own food. Uh, that's, a, that's a way to be able to do that. But ultimately, um, it's about the choices that you're able to make and what you're able to eat uh, really will impact your health. Um, and so being able to have that in the schools, that it's um, incorporated into their meals, uh, the school meal programs, the summer program that we have, the lunchbox, all of that goes toward building an appreciation, understanding that this, is, this can really help build your life and change it. And it sounds like you've got a lot of sponsors on board. We do. We have a lot of great community support and, and business sponsors who help make this all possible. Mm -hmm. Well, another program is the Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Coupon Program, mm -hmm. which provides um, income-eligible Vermonters with coupons for fresh fruits and vegetables, which is very important, as we've been talking about. Let's take a look at that. Patty Bondor is picking up some food for the week. Her basket is full of the fresh fruit and vegetables she likes to stick with. I'm a foodie, and when I was working, uh, my husband and I had a sandwich counter in Glover, and um, we, we are really into good food, you know, and healthy food. These days, Bandor is retired, and her husband can't work because of a disability. Making ends meet every month is hard, and they don't always have reliable transportation. So just getting to the store can be difficult. They've learned to be resourceful. You know, it's a struggle. It really is. But we try to be creative, and in the summer I fish a lot and try to freeze a lot of the fish that I catch as well so that, you know, we at least have, you know, more choices, uh, more healthy choices. And I garden a little bit, but there's only so much I can do. The Bondors are far from alone in their struggle. We know that 18% of our children and families in the Northeast Kingdom are living in poverty, and so they're having to make tough choices on a daily basis about how to spend their limited resources. 
Catherine Sims is the executive director of Green Mountain Farm to School. The organization works with schools, institutions, and farmers to promote access to healthy local food. For a new initiative, they've teamed up with local markets around the Northeast Kingdom to provide coupons for fresh fruits and vegetables. We received funding to offer 400 families in Orleans and Essex, Vermont, who participate in the Three Squares Vermont program, the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. So we had 400 coupon booklets to distribute to eligible Vermonters, and they received $75 in $1 increments to spend um, on fresh fruits and vegetables only at five participating grocery stores. To spread the word about the program, around 2,000 households in Essex and Orleans County received a letter inviting them to enroll in the program. The coupons were then distributed at a number of participating stores on a first-come, first-served basis. The whole store was packed the day that they were signing up. As the manager of Kingdom Market in Island Pond, Sherry Sargent was there the day the coupon books were given out. You saw a variety of different people getting them, um, people with children, older people. It wasn't just set on one age group. The idea is to make using the coupons convenient by incorporating the stores that people in the area are likely to shop at. Well, we're talking now with the new executive director of the Green Mountain Farm to School program, James Haverman. Is the uh, coupon program being offered again this year? Absolutely. Uh, we're in the second year now, and uh, this year we have a lot more money available. So we have $60,000 worth of coupons that will be distributed to 1,600 uh, qualifying residents. That's amazing. It is. Uh, it's, the program will work a little bit differently this year. Um, this year it's going to be a qualifying purchase, so people can uh, use their SNAP benefits at the store, and as they make a purchase uh, of $10 for qualifying uh, SNAP uh, purchases, then they'll get a $5 coupon that they can use. If they want, they can go right back into the store and use that coupon at that time. That's terrific. Well, yeah. what else is coming up for Green Mountain Farm to School? Well, it's a busy fall. Mm -hmm. um, school just started here in Vermont, so um, we're uh, getting uh, launching all of our Farm to School programs. Um, it's also fall harvest time for the, the gardens. So we have 27 school gardens that we help maintain, and so we're going to be uh, helping the kids harvest the food and cook it and have uh, harvest festivals uh, there as well. Um, the other piece of that is uh, related to school meals. We're going to be working with a number of schools on promoting their school meals, and so encouraging kids to be eating at school, that it tastes good and that it's healthy. Um, so that's another initiative. Um, and also our um, food hub, the Farm Direct, really gets uh, going. We're busy all year, but um, because of the schools are ordering their food again, um, we work with farms to uh, supply uh, almost 100 schools uh, with um, uh, fresh farm raised food. And so how does that work exactly? Yeah, so um, we manage a website where we post all the available uh, products that we have with the 24 different farms that we work with. And then institutions and schools and uh, restaurants um, put in an order. And then we handle everything in between in terms of getting them the food and the invoicing. So it really streamlines the process for both the farm and for the customer. Um, but it's also a great way for us to market uh, the farms because we have a lot of great materials that tell people about where their food is coming from and that it's uh, people in their community who are raising it. What's the biggest challenge? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> um, there is so much to do, and mm -hmm. there's so many people who uh, can continue to be using our you know, services. Um, there are more schools that we'd like to be able to do uh, services with in terms of farm to school programming. We just don't always have uh, the ability to reach all those schools. So we're trying to be really thoughtful about how we go about um, reaching out to those schools and what services that we can provide in the way that we do that um, specifically. Um, and then we also always have you know, uh, towns in need um, for the lunchbox. Um, and so we're trying to make sure that people know where it is and how to access it um, while, while still um, maintaining our ability to keep it on the road. And so where can people find out more about the organization and the programs that you run? Well, the first place you can go to is our website, greenmountainfarmtoschool.org. Um, our uh, email address is located there as well. Um, or you can call our office. And you're always looking for volunteers and folks to help out, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. Anyone who wants to come help in a garden uh, is more than welcome. So uh, we could definitely uh, use an extra hand or two, you know, especially in the fall and the spring. All right. Well, James, thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.